Hey everybody, welcome to Ready, Set, Drone. I've been putting this off for a little while because I wanted to get a lot of stick time with the DJI Phantom 4 Pro. I've got that now, been flying it a ton, doing a lot of cool stuff. So here is my full review. You're gonna learn some cool stuff, so stay tuned. About a year ago, uh, all we had was the Phantom 4 that had just come out. And before that, a year and a half ago, it was the Phantom 3 series. So the Phantom 4 came out about a year ago. And then right after that, they followed in the fall with the Mavic. And then they followed after that with the Phantom 4 Pro. And now they just announced the uh, Matrice 200, which is the industrial drone. So my point is DJI is putting out a lot of stuff. And so it's pretty rapid uh, product development which if you're a fan of that, it's a great thing. It can cost you a lot of money. As anybody who owns an iPhone or a other Android phone knows, you can get caught up in getting the latest and greatest. But I'm here to tell you whether or not the Phantom 4 Pro is worth the upgrade. So the first thing I'm gonna tell you about is the biggest differences between the Phantom 4 Pro and the regular old Phantom 4 from a year ago. Number one is the battery. The Phantom 4 Pro battery is the very same size, and they're actually pretty hard to tell apart, but you can because the Phantom 4 Pro has a white label, the Phantom 4 has a gray label. But the more important difference is that the Phantom 4 Pro is a 5870, that's 5870 milliamp hour battery, whereas the Phantom 4 battery is a 5350 milliamp hour battery. Now what is a milliamp hour? It's basically like your fuel tank. The bigger the milliamp hour, uh, number, the more fuel you have and the longer you can fly. So of course you get a slightly longer flight time out of the Phantom 4 Pro than you do the Phantom 4. The next thing is that the Phantom 4 Pro can take a 128 gigabyte micro SD card. Now why is that important? Um, it's important because the Phantom 4 and the Mavic can only take a 64 gigabyte micro SD card. And if you're flying around a lot, the last thing you wanna do is have your card fill up and have to go delete files or change a card out in the middle of your flight. So the fact that you can take a 128 in this guy, I think is a big step, even though it's a minor thing, it wasn't really noted, but it, it, to me, it's a pretty important one. Uh, the next thing is that the Phantom 4 Pro has more collision sensors. Now the Phantom 4, um, was one of the first drones to come out with collision sensors. Um, they still both have these uh, cameras in the front, these guys right here, that are optical collision sensors. It's also got infrared and optical on the side, and it's also got them in the back, and it's also got them on the bottom. So basically, with the exception of the top, um, this thing is pretty hard to crash. I'm not saying it can't be done, because I have done it, but uh, I am saying that this has a lot more uh, protection as far as collision sensors go. This also has, and the biggest difference, is a bigger sensor in the camera. So this is a one inch sensor giving you 20 million pixels of resolution. It looks almost exactly the same as the DJI Phantom 4, which is a 12.4 megapixel camera. So you're basically not quite doubling, but almost doubling the number of megapixels and a one inch sensor. And what does that mean? You're getting better pictures, sharper images, less jaggedness, more detail, um, all of those things. So if you are a photographer, that's a big plus. And um, you know, making videos with this thing, the, the footage is absolutely elegant. So the frame rate is also amazing. At, at 1920 by 1080, you can shoot 120 frames per second, which makes nice slow-mo. At 4K, you can shoot 60 frames a second. So that means if you're shooting 4K at 60 frames a second, you can slow-mo on that, zoom in on it, do all kinds of cool stuff. So it's a pretty amazing difference that the camera makes. The other great thing about this is uh, if you buy the Plus version, it comes with this little 5.5 inch Android device. Now, I'm still on the fence about this guy. It's really handy to have. It doesn't tie up your phone. It's pretty bright but there are some drawbacks to it that I'm gonna talk about in a minute. But it's optional. You can fly, you can still fly with your uh, tablet or your phone. So, you know, if that's how you wanna go, you can, or I decided to get this screen just to see what it was like. But again, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about it, but that's a big difference between the Phantom 4 and the Phantom 4 Pro. The Phantom 4 does not offer a screen like this. Now, I'm just gonna go through the pros of the Pro. See what I did there? Um, first of all, everything I mentioned above. Uh, obviously those things are, are pretty important in terms of flight time, et cetera. But here's some other things. 
it can take Phantom 4 batteries. So this is a Phantom 4 Pro battery. This is a Phantom 4 battery. Guess what? It slips right in and it works just fine. Oop, I've got to put it in the right way. But it's nice because if you have uh, five or six Phantom 4 batteries like I do, you don't have to chuck them all. I can still sell my Phantom 4 and still use some of the batteries which are over 100 bucks each. So that's nice. The biggest difference is because they're a lower milliamp hour compared to the Phantom 4 Pro batteries, you're not going to get as much flight time. But other than that, they're good to go. You will notice when you put in a Phantom 4 battery into the Phantom 4 Pro, it'll tell you you have inconsistent firmware and you have to do a firmware update on the battery itself, which is not a big deal. It's a couple of buttons in the DJI Go app. The next thing is that it takes amazing video. I mean, the videos and the photos in this thing are just incredible. Uh, it is super smooth in the air, especially when there's wind. This is the most uh, wind resistant drone I've ever flown as far as holding its stability in a heavy wind. Again, I'm gonna show you this flag footage. You can see by the flag that the wind was blowing like crazy, but this thing was just sitting there rock solid um, because of the GPS and the sensors. I mean, it's really dialed in. And then uh, finally, it has a bunch of smart flight modes. It's got uh, trace mode, it's got follow me mode, it's got orbit. I mean, it's got all those things built into the G DJI Go app and they've really refined a lot of them. Um, some of those didn't work that great in, in version one, but now with, uh, with this and with the Mavic, you know, it's more of a software update than anything, but the DJI Phantom 4 Pro, in my opinion, really utilizes those uh, programs. And if you're shooting cinematic video and you need to follow somebody in a scene, you can do it automatically and not have to do 20 takes to get it right. So now the cons. Um, there are some cons to this thing. Number one, just like all the other Phantoms, um, and, and this I didn't even realize this until I started flying the Mavic, this thing has a pretty high center of gravity. And the reason it does is because it has to keep the, uh, the gimbal and the, the camera off the ground, right? So it's pretty high off the ground considering its size. What does that mean, a high center of gravity? That means a big strong wind during takeoff can actually cause it to tip over. Same thing with landing. It also means that it can be a little bit harder to set it on a level surface and get it straight to take off. Um, I wish it had a lower center of gravity. I wish that the gimbal didn't have to be quite so big, but you know, that's gonna be version six or seven. It's a small complaint, but it is a complaint that I have. Um, the next thing is that the Android screen on the remote seems to be locked down. I've tried to install other applications on this uh, device using the uh, Google Play Store and I can't do it. It won't let me do it. Now, I might just not know Android well enough, but I don't think that's the case. I think they've got this thing locked down because they don't want people putting third-party software on it yet. I hope that that changes. I hope that DJI gets in, you know, kind of like the Apple Store does where they approve things and they test them and they make sure they're not going to crash your drone or crash your system. But currently right now, I couldn't put Drone Deploy in it. I couldn't put Pix4D. I couldn't put a screen recorder. None of that stuff. I just can only go with what DJI actually allows me to put on there. So a bit of a drawback. And quite honestly, if I had known that was a case, I might not have actually bought it with the screen. Um, another thing about the screen is it's not really a great touch screen. And you can tell the difference. This thing requires... Uh, a lot of hunting and pecking in order to push the buttons. It's okay. If you use an Android, you probably know what I'm talking about. I'm sure there's some really great Androids out there, but this one, the touchscreen is okay, but not super great. Um, and then, of course, the higher price point. This thing is actually uh, one of the more expensive uh, prosumer drones out there. Of course, you can go with the Inspire, which is a lot more expensive, but between it and the Phantom 4, the Phantom 4 has been discontinued by DJI, and so therefore the prices drop significantly. So this is going to be sort of their top of the line until you get into the Inspire or, or um, uh, Matrice series. And then finally, when you buy this thing or any other modern quad from DJI, Unique, or probably a lot of the vendors, um, if they are software-based, count on an hour of setup time, you're not gonna be able to just plug and play this thing. You're gonna to have to download the latest firmware, do all the updates, calibrate the compass. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things you have to go through. So um, I do have a, a, a setup video for this that I'll link to and you guys can check it out, but don't think you're gonna be able to take it out of the box and fly it in 15 minutes. That's not gonna happen. And even once it's set up, uh, every time you go to fly, don't cut it too close in terms of time because you're gonna have to do software updates, firmware updates, it, it requires that all the time. I'm glad they're updating it all the time, but at the same time, it's a little bit of a hassle. But just know that you know if you if you got an important shoot tomorrow or something you want to get done, uh, start it up the night before and and uh, do all those firmware updates. That way, the next day, odds are pretty good you'll be able to fly without having to do that. 
especially if you're gonna be out in a remote place without good connectivity. So those were my cons. Um, one other thing that I've seen a lot of people asking about, and I did some research on this, um, why does the Phantom 4 Pro still use Lightbridge? Now the Mavic uses OcuSync, and people are like, well, hey, isn't OcuSync the latest and greatest? It's got uh, further, uh, further duration or further distance you can go with OcuSync. Um, well, I found out something very important. OcuSync is not actually an upgrade, it's more of a fork. And the difference is OcuSync is a lower resolution and lower image quality, but lower latency. Whereas Lightbridge is higher image quality, but higher latency. Now we're talking 300 milliseconds here, so it isn't a big deal, but guess what? The Mavic is designed to be flown with DJI's new FPV goggles and 300 milliseconds of latency with FPV goggles is not a good thing, if you get my drift. So um, so they've gone with Lightbridge. I, I don't know if it's Lightbridge 2 or what, what version of it it is, but it's basically gonna give you a clearer, stronger, uh, higher resolution signal. And I believe it actually gives you a 1080, 1080 signal until it can't anymore and then it drops to 720. I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. But regardless, I've had this thing quite a ways away from myself, still in line of sight, of course, but, um, and, and the image on the screen is, is just beautiful and hasn't dropped out at all. I've had very little issue with the dropout on that. So uh, that's, the, that's the answer to why it still uses Lightbridge. I imagine DJI is just planning to have anything that's gonna use the goggles use OcuSync and anything that you know is for serious cinematographers use Lightbridge. So again, I'm gonna reiterate, what's the biggest difference between this and the Phantom 4? It's the camera. It's 20 megapixels versus 12.4 megapixels. That's a huge difference. It's a bigger sensor. Um, it's better motors, longer flight time. But if you're sitting there and you don't own one of these quads and you're thinking, hey, I'd kind of like to buy myself a nice uh, video quad, ask yourself this. Do, uh, do you make your living flying uh, quads or shooting video for customers? If you do, this is a great choice. If you don't, I'd go with the Phantom 4, quite honestly. It is 90% as good as the Phantom 4 Pro, except for the video, but honestly, to the untrained eye and to most people in good light, you're not gonna be able to tell the difference. So um, if video is your passion or video is your job, then the Phantom 4 Pro is worth looking at. If it's not, the Phantom 4 is a good choice, and I know they're gonna be dropping rapidly now that DJI has discontinued them. And then the last thing I'll say is, quite honestly, if you're an adventurer or you go on a lot of trips, get the Mavic. The Mavic shoots video that is almost in, indistinguishable, and I have, a video I have a video comparing the Mavic to the Phantom 4, almost indistinguishable from the um, Phantom 4. And so if you're gonna be wanting to pack it into a backpack and take it to Russia or Armenia or Norway or who, wherever, or Oklahoma, look out, uh, you, you really wanna just get the Mavic and take it with you. So that's it, that's the Phantom 4 Pro. I really like this drone. Is it worth replacing your Phantom 4? Probably not, unless you're a pro. Is it better than the Mavic? It's different than the Mavic. It's, it's more focused around the camera and the things you can do with it. The Mavic has a great camera. So if you're more a, of an adventurer gonna be out taking this to, on trips, I'd stick with the Mavic. So thanks a lot for watching this review of the DJI Phantom 4 Pro. I realize there's a lot of things that we didn't cover, um, such as the weight, which is 1,388 grams, and the size, which is 350 millimeters motor to motor. But those things are all covered on the website. Those things are all covered elsewhere. I just wanted to give you my thoughts on it as someone who's flown it quite a bit. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you really like it, hit the subscribe button. And we'll see you next time on Ready, Set, Drone.